Every important event in our life is marked or celebrated by a ritual, a set of common actions that carry a particular significance to the people who perform them. These symbolic activities help us to express and deal with our thoughts and emotions. Death is a major life event that is celebrated and commemorated through specific mortuary rituals. Full of symbolism, the funeral ceremony helps the mourners accept death and celebrate the life of the deceased. By means of these rituals, people's faith and belief in life and the afterlife are strengthened. Human burial practices are also a manifestation of respect for the dead. Every culture and civilization attends to the proper care of their dead, and although these rituals and beliefs differ, they seem to have three things in common. Some type of funeral rites, rituals, and ceremonies. A sacred place for the dead. Remembrance of the dead. We know very little about what definition thought would happen after life. However, we do have some information on how the bodies were prepared for this journey. Although the ritual preparation of the deceased for the interment varied according to social class, all bodies were washed, dosed with perfumed oils, and wrapped in cloth bandages. According to the Bible, the journey to the grave was frequently followed by ritual acts of lamentation, wearing of the sackcloth, tearing of hair, and beating of breasts. The body was frequently accompanied by a large selection of artifacts that were believed to be required in the long journey in the afterlife. These objects, some of which actually owned by the deceased, included food, coins, ceramic objects, and figurines. The inclusion of both ritual and practical objects is sometimes cited as evidence of the belief in an afterlife, an afterlife in which the deceased would have actually made use of these objects. Occasionally, objects which were believed to have magical properties were also buried with the deceased. These protected and safeguarded his or her journey to the afterlife. Unsurprisingly, Egyptian amulets were amongst the most common talismans. The Phoenicians assimilated a considerable amount of rites from the Egyptian culture, including also the invocation of their gods and goddesses as protectors. Such a prayer is inscribed on a small papyrus found in a tomb in private property at Tel Virtu, just outside Rabat. This prayer invokes the divine help of the Egyptian goddess Isis to defeat the enemy blocking a sea journey to the underworld. A ceremonial meal or banquet was probably also enacted over the grave to inaugurate its closure and its completion ceremonially marked by the possible pouring of libations or the burning of incense. The Roman ritual started at the deathbed where relatives usually gathered for the person's final hours. At that, the closest relative usually gave a goodbye kiss and closed the eyes of the deceased. Lamentations also started immediately after death, with mourners repeatedly crying out the deceased's name in a rite called conclamatio, that also served as a notice of death to the rest of the household. It was also at this point that a west mask of the deceased's face was taken. This was usually kept in the atrium of the house together with those of his ancestors. In the Roman period, it was also custom to put a coin between the deceased's teeth with which to pay Charon, the ferryman who transported the deceased across the river Styx that was believed to form the boundary between the land of the living and the land of the dead called Hades. This was a rite that was also very similar to what was carried out during the Phoenician period. Poor people were often carried away for burial at night in a very simple procession. However, rich citizens were usually carried away in lavish funeral processions that included musicians, paid mourners, mimes, freed slaves and family members. The procession was an important and complicated affair and the family of the deceased could hire a libertinarius who took care of all the necessary preparations. At the cemetery the deceased would be interred in graves, built tombs or sarcophagi. The latter have, however, never been found in the Maltese islands. The deceased could also be cremated. The most simple of cremations was the bastum during which the body was burnt in a shallow grave, dug in the soil and filled with dry wood. Once expired, the ashes and remains would just be covered by a mound of earth. The rogus, an altar-shaped pyre of considerable size, was, however, more common. Objects that were close to the deceased were usually also thrown into the pyre, together with a large amount of unguents and perfumes to cover the stench. For most attendees, the funeral ended once the funeral pyre was consumed. 
and only the closest relatives remained to extinguish the embers with water and wine. The remaining ashes and burned bones were collected, dampened with milk and wine, and placed into an urn similar to the one seen in the visitor center. Offerings of food and drink were often also done to the deceased, and the blocking stones of the cubicula in the earlier catacombs contained a channel that transported this liquid offerings to the burial chamber itself. These offerings later on changed into proper funeral meals carried out at the end of the funeral and signified the start of a mourning period called the Esferia that lasted nine days. This too culminated in a funeral ritual meal in which the relatives commemorated the dead as well as officiating the end of their mourning period. The importance of these funeral meals for both pagans and Christians can be identified in the presence of rock hewn triclinia within the Maltese catacombs. This multi-religious use of these tables makes such catacombs very difficult to identify unless symbols relating to one religion, usually Christian, are identified. Early Christians used a number of symbols to identify their catacombs, ranging from the cross and the, to the palm front, the fish to the anchor, all of which were laden with symbolic meaning and most of which were also used in the St. Paul's catacomb. The menorah, a seven-branched candlestick, is the symbol par excellence that indicates the presence of Jews or Jewish ritual. This symbol can be found engraved in catacombs used by the Jewish community of the town of Melite between the 4th and 8th centuries AD. The burial rituals carried out by the Jews are even more elusive than those of the pagan Romans and Christians. However, the catacombs themselves tell us that they did not assimilate Roman rituals like the still developing Christian religion did. The complete absence of the triclinium within catacombs with Jewish symbols probably indicates that such meals were not carried out during Jewish burials. Ancient documents and modern research also seem to exclude the carrying out of lavish ceremonies seen in pagan and possibly Christian burials. Cremation was not permitted and the body had to be buried in the ground as quickly as possible as opposed to the long display of the corpse carried out by pagans. In general, Jewish funerals were simpler and a more intimate affair. Funerals possibly started by the immediate relatives tearing off their garments to symbolize their loss. The actual ceremony including the recital of psalms, followed by a eulogy, regardless of the deceased social status and the memorial prayer. A procession did occur, however, this was also very simple and was only made up of the pallbearers and mourners. <laughs>